How did you meet Tina Turner and begin working with her? Tina, we had a uh, a demo. My wife, Leanne, and I wrote the song. Well, she wrote a lot of it was in Memphis. And after the Blues Brothers came to a fish fry, we had cooked some fish one night. Me and Duck Dunn, they all came out. And she had this little poem, something about the Blues Brothers giving me the blues and this and that. Or, so we started messing with it, and it turned out undercover agent for the blues. And I had it on a demo of uh, undercover agent Steamy Windows, uh, Foreign Affair, and uh, You Know Who Is Doing You Know What. It was like four songs. And Roger Davis, her manager, calls from L.A. and said, he wanted me to fly to L.A. that Tina really loved uh, Undercover Agent for the Blues, but she wanted me to play guitar on the session. So this was like that Elvis thing again, because Tina was just like that to me on the female side, you know. Tina Turner, I mean, good man, it's like, <laughs> make you start stuttering. So I flew out there, me and Roger met, and he said, man, that demo you've got, he said, it's just so slanky. He said, we got, it needs to sound like this. And I cut it like on an eight track or something at my house. It was like one of the earlier studios I had. I said, well, it sound pretty close. If I'm playing guitar, we got a B3, drums and bass, and don't have a bunch of stuff on the side. So... He said, okay, I want you to come meet Tina. So she's doing a Chrysler commercial or one of those car deals. So I went over to this big studio. Tina's in, the, in a dressing room there and she's getting her makeup put on her and a bunch of women hovering around her. And me and Roger were standing there in the door and Roger says, Tina, Tony Joe's here. And she looked around like that and she started laughing so hard, man. She was like, she couldn't quit, and then she'd get her breath, and then she'd start again. I thought, man, my pants are unzipped or something. I wait all this time to meet Tana Turner, and something's really messed up here. And Roger, he's kind of scuffling his feet a little bit, you know. <laughs> she can't quit. Finally, she gets up, she comes over to me, she puts her arm around me, and she said, I'm sorry, man, for that. She said, after all this time in Polk, South Lady, I thought you was a black man. Uh. <laughs> So we hit it off immediately. It's like instant, you know, just beautiful relationship there. She said, we're going to Chicago to cut this song. Undercover, I said, great. She said, I want you to play guitar, just like you did on the session. We get to Chicago, Roger and her and me, and they kept it simple, bass, drums, B3 organ, and me. And she's in the booth singing. And uh, halfway through Undercover Agent, where the instrumental part starts, she kicks the door open in the singing booth and just comes strutting out through the room where me and the drummer and bass and all that is, and grabs a mic off the cymbals um, of the drummer and just gets down like that and just finishes the song. And it's like watching a concert, man. And I'm going, God, I hope they're taking it, you know. Cause, and that was the cut. No bleed over or nothing, you know. So we took a break. We were sitting around talking. She said, you know, there was another song on that little old demo of yours I really love. I want to do it next. And she said, it's called Steamy Windows. And I said, yeah. So we go back in the studio, one take. Undercover Agent was one take. Steamy's one take. So we're just all, I'm just kind of like floating around because not only is Tina doing my song, but I'm getting to play guitar and watch this happen. And I just thought she was going to do that one song. So we went to the hotel and I get a phone call about 10 o'clock that night and Roger calls and he says, don't, don't book no flights for tomorrow. He said, Tina's found a... Uh, Two more songs on that tape she wants to do in the morning. <laughs> oh, God. So the song she wanted to do, which is one I've kind of had written pretty close for her, was called Foreign Affair. And 
the other one was called You Know Who Is Doing You Know What, which is kind of a funky thing. So we cut You Know Who Is Doing You Know What the next morning. And then Tina all of a sudden jumps up and says, I want to do Foreign Affair in Paris. <laughs> so it was like, you go, everybody goes, okay, let's get some flats, man. So we fly to London, go in the studio there, which it had booked for us to do the tracks. And we take the tracks and fly over to Paris the next night. One take, she does it again, like, just sings it. And it's like, I thought, how cool somehow just all of a sudden the mood of a song makes them go to a whole other country, you know? She did it. That's an incredible story. Yeah, and all of it. Really true. Do you still see Tina now and then? or Talked to her um, last fall, and she's really kicked back. This time she is laying back and enjoying her house and not traveling to her. But then I saw Roger in Australia last week for last. He said she's actually, you can see the little cogs starting to turn and he says she's getting a little house bound. <laughs> so she's talking about maybe just going out and playing some smaller places, none of the big fireworks shows and all that, but just cool little places and maybe cutting, cutting that way, a whole album of simplicity, you know. If it happens, it'd be big. John Mayall did a pretty kick conversion of Undercover. Yeah, he did. That's another thing that in Australia at those two festivals, I had Ray Charles and John Mayall on the same show together with me. 